You don't need to go to a tropical island to experience paradise. You can have it right here at Cannington over the next two Saturday nights with the heats of the Paradise Street Trophy. Hello, my name is James Broadhurst. Welcome to the Wednesday Preview. Joining me, as he always does, is the Regal Race caller himself, Hayden King. How are you, Hayden? I'm well, James. How are you? Good, good, good. Looking forward to this 600-metre series. The middle distance dogs taking the centre stage here at Cannington. Why don't we get stuck straight into these heats here, kicking off with Heat 1 on Saturday night. And uh, look, small field as they are for all these heats, but uh, this field is a beauty. We've got Corporal Kuna here out of box two here. Where has this dog come from, Hayden? Just really clicked over the past three starts, got a hat trick to his name. Those have been at provincial grade, but the form is red hot. You cannot look past this greyhound in this series. Superman Keeping is a dog I've got some question marks around. Now remember, when he won the Christmas gift at the end of last year, I think I made the comment that this dog was a dog going places. Well, he has campaigned over east. Unfortunately, has been off the track for some time on the comeback trail now. Had the one start two Sundays ago after four months off. So queries over where this dog is at at the moment. We've got a comment from Sean Kavanagh, the trainer. We'll get to that in a moment. Hurricane Taylor, five wins from nine starts over the 600. Really handy dog. I think this is his best distance as well. Count Surfer, another one of these query dogs, in my opinion. Of course, we know what a talented dog he is, but he does return from a campaign over east. He raced in Newcastle and Sandown. Performed okay, uh, but hasn't quite kicked on from that brilliant start that we saw in the early part of his career. Of course, a lot of upside, I think, to this Greyhound. And then we've got Sage Tennille, won over this distance at novice level last month. This is a sizable step up, though. What do you think? Um, where do you look to in this race? Because there's a lot of intrigue, isn't there? Indeed. And I think most of the actions toward the inside, I think... Uh, the wings are the, probably the weaker parts, for want of a better word. Corporal Kuna didn't look like he was going to get up last time, but he showed really great mm. temerity to wear down Quick Smart in the late stages of that contest. So, really deserved that win. It is a dog that continues to get better. Superman Keeping was terribly unlucky in that race on the Sunday you referenced. That was over 520 up to 600, which helps. I do think the dog's still probably looking for further, but. Um, based on his previous form, we can see him rattling home and being very competitive. Hurricane Taylor was quite disappointing, I thought, last time out when seventh. Before that, was going well enough to be at least right up there in this kind of company. And then you've got Couch Surfer, who was highly touted uh, earlier on in the year, went through those big race series. So you have to really respect him. And he, he does come in with the best credentials, so he is going to be definitely the one to beat, in my opinion. Okay, so your favouring couch surfer in yep. this one? Yep. Uh, look, in terms of name-wise, I guess so. I, I think this is a case of, like, who turns up on the night, really. I guess, yeah. And, and I, you know, given they're coming from different angles, got Corporal Kuna flying, and you've got couch surfer and Superman Keeper, which are maybe uh bigger name dogs that are their preparation isn't quite as stable i i yeah i, I just i think this is a really interesting race i think if couch surfer t- turns up he will win though agreed with that that assessment not sure that he will though i guess is the the, the query mark with him look as mentioned we did speak to sean kavanagh about superman keeping and uh, this is what he had to say he's been trialing well Unfortunately, he runs into a very talented field for his first 600 metre run this prep, but hopefully he can find the rails early and sneak into the final. All right, that's Sean Kavanagh with his thoughts on Superman keeping. Let's swing over to the next heat, heat two. And uh, another interesting race here. Columbus Manelli has been mixing his form a little bit of late out of box two here. We've got Lentil Manelli, a dog that's been racing really well over the 500 metre journey. Stepped up to the 600 last week and found all sorts after beginning only fairly. She did finish off quite well though which I thought was pretty encouraging happy to put a line through that run and just have another look at her again over this distance quick smart we mentioned him uh, just getting beaten last week early speed big asset for him Uh, look there's a lot of buzz 
around this greyhound when he first came over to WA, wasn't there earlier this year. I think he's now finally starting to justify some of that buzz and starting to put in some good performance with him. I think a dog with a bit of upside. And then we've got Speed Freak here. Look, she's a dog that's been in superb touch over the 715. Does have a good record over the 600 as well. Is a last start winner over this trip. In fact, why don't we go and have a look at that run and from box eight speed freak begins well to cross over and puts herself behind the leading pair little miss ava and clifton cruz but she's got the seven dog left right now bugging her on the inside speed freak clashes with left right now on the second bend and drops back a bit but quickly recovers and heads the route and look at it open up ahead of her there's room on the fence as the others track wide she pushes up along the inside she makes up a lot of ground in a short space of time here she comes rattling home to carry the day in 35 41 impressive effort from speed freak she comes into this one as one of the big guns yeah, and the two dogs you haven't mentioned there, I think are worth mentioning okay. because Sinbin Sammy first up in the West yeah, found a heap of trouble and was really cannoning to the line. So there's another oh, one for sweet, Sean yeah. Kavanagh. He's got a good hand in these heats. He does. And the other one is Corborn Roses, another that has really been blistering home okay. and has been consistent. So hasn't quite put the runs on the board yet, though. Hasn't won a race yet, but yeah. is going well enough to be striking in a race over the 600. Just a case of being tossed into the deep end here because it is a really good lineup. This is a good heat, this second heat. And then the others you did mention, Columbus Minnelli on his night, as you referenced, is very, very capable indeed. Lentil Minnelli won well two starts ago despite not having the best getaway. And then again, as you mentioned, found the line strongly last time. Speed Freak has become one of the benchmarks over these 600 and particularly the 715 trips in recent times and quick smart another that was surprisingly beaten last time given the in run position right so that's uh, something to consider but could definitely be a pace angle in this race most of these dogs or well, probably you'd say four of the seven we've got uh, four of the six you've got lining up are going to be come from behind greyhounds so he could have that pace angle which does help any one you're zeroing in on? No, I found this heat the trickiest of the mm. lot, so I'm prepared to... Well, for the sake of um, mentioning them, I think Simbin Sammy's going to be a real improver off the yeah, inside. A bit of a smoky here mm. for this one. Look, I, I can't go past Speed Freak. I actually yeah, got my eye on Lentil Manelli here. I think can combine that early speed with what we saw a good if she can finish as well as she did last week as well she could be a smoky in this one as well yep. all right heat three yeah and uh, we've got clifton cruz here out of the pole looked like he was going to make it four in a row last week but copped a check into the home straight just as he hit the lead he got swamped Huge chance to rebound here, in my opinion. Uh, Nanga Chief, another dog that stands out here for me. First crack over this distance has been improving, I think, uh, for trainer Shane Williams. And Crypto Manelli. Okay, we've got the, the volatile crypto market going on here with this greyhound. At his best, I think probably the favourite here, but since we talked him up about a month or so ago, he has hit nothing but roadblocks. Hayden, winless in his past five, can you believe? Look, I think the smaller field definitely helps him here because he, he's not a front runner uh, and he has been finding trouble on his path through over the past month or so. What do you think? Can Crypto Manelli feature in this one? He can be a front runner from time to time when he does jump and last start, he looked pretty dangerous when he lobbed third, but he didn't find much at the crucial stages and copped a little bit of interference, but he wasn't there to win the race anyway and boxed on into fourth place. So. I agree. I don't think he's anywhere near his best at the moment. The other one you haven't mentioned is Dusty Deluxe drawn out wide. This dog's been racing quite well and could really come into calculations here, yep. providing he gets that good run across. The other two are likely to be a bigger odds. Ballistic Ant is struggling for a little bit of form, and Sassy Blade um, has registered infrequent wins in her career. It's going to be an interesting battle, I guess. You've got... Clifton Cruz drawn the inside, which helps. Mm. Nanga Chief is on the way up. It's the dog with some scope, particularly over 600 metres, and Shane Williams is beginning to find this dog's campaign and gradually uh, come into calculations in these races. So it's, it's an interesting heat, that's for sure. And I think there's probably four key winning chances. 
Look, I'm probably leaning towards Clifton Cruz here. On the face of it, I thought last week's run was disappointing. Then went back and had a look. Look, he did get that check. He form prior to that has been superb. I can't really go past that, certainly from box one here. He, he has the runs on the board, so he's the most acclimated of them, I guess. I think Nanga Chief is the one that could potentially threaten. Okay. That is the heats of the Paradise Street at Cannington on Saturday night. We've also got a feature race series kicking off at Cannington on Friday night. That is the Great Western. And we've got four heats of those here at headquarters. Why don't we have a look at the fourth of those, Hayden. And uh, this is a really tough race to read. In fact, tough series in general, I thought. Uh, some of the dogs that stood out for me in this heat from box one, Mohican Mistress got up at Big Ogs over this distance last start. That was from the other end of the boxes. Uh, so from the pole, that'll definitely help her chances in this. Delphine uh, was a beaten favourite last night in what was her first attempt over the 380 metre journey. Uh, where does that leave her for this one? Big If, the veteran, raised the bat for 100 uh, last Tuesday. Has been thereabouts of late and has shown early speed over the 520 meter journey box six though can be a bit tricksy uh for any greyhound not least of which big if in this race and rubidium hasn't raced since mandra shut down so the very least that greyhound will be fresh for this one have i missed any here hayden no i think you've got the bigger guns in this race. Mahika Mistress was good from that wide draw to score last time out. Box number one, I don't think will hurt. West on Fern, all over Katie, probably a bigger odd. Stanger Storm's been going okay. That third last time out over the 520 was strong enough. Delphini, as you mentioned last night, was in that preferential box draw novice and swept up to second and then wobbled really wide on the home turn and cost itself any kind of chance when it was pretty short in the betting, about that mm. fifty mark. Right. So uh, probably not as well served from box number five, considering that fact that it had that draw last night preferentially. Big If is probably the class in this race, getting back to 380. You like which, Big If, don't Yeah, you? I've, I've had a little bit of a soft <laughs> spot for this dog for a little while, and back to 380, just doesn't quite see out the 520, and the wet track didn't help last time because he was just paddling late, and it was um, hard work, but 380, if he can put himself up on speed there, he's going to be really hard to beat. Rubidium can fly out. We saw in that last win at Mandra, it led by at least a couple of lengths after about 10 metres, so if it was able to begin like that, um, Rubidium would come right into calculations and then Zeke drawn out wide coming back from Masters. Hard to know though with a dog that hasn't raced for that amount of time. That, that, maybe that's less of a factor over the short course. I guess and uh, it depends on the trainer, how ready they have them and uh, I guess I don't really know if Terry's got the dog up and running at this stage of the prep but I'm prepared to go with Big If. The consistency is there and this dog's ready to win one. All right. Um, you Big If for you in the heat four of four heats. Of what are you going? Great Western in that race. I found this whole... I'm, I'm waiting to the final, mate, to see how these heats play out because I, 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 I can't pick anything in any of those heats, i got to say. Uh, that is the heats of the Great Western on Friday night. Racing at Cannington tonight as well, of course, five nights a week at the moment Hayden Tuesday Wednesday Friday Saturday Sunday free entry on all of those nights who have you got for Cannington tonight I'm going race five number two Bell Mac Blazer now this dog has some early speed has been racing very competitively in those top grade kind of races for the age and sex and uh, should be able to get up on speed has some early dash curious eggs drawn out wide very very capable dog I just thought he needs to do everything right from out there. There is a little bit of pressure from underneath and dogs that can use a bit of the track. So Bill McBlazer, I, re I really think this dog, well, providing things go right and they go wrong for like some of the other leading fancies, this dog will win. So race five, number two, Bill McBlazer. All right, I'm heading towards race eight, the dog jumping out of box seven here. Tweak a freak. Uh, look, Greyhound is airborne early and expecting her to be able to sweep across and put herself into a good position early here. Hoping she can lead. Generally, when she does find the lead, she does go on to, to win things. When she doesn't, uh, things don't go as well for her. Look, tough race, and the wide draw certainly doesn't help her. Uh, 
I'd like to see a bit more than the two dollars she's currently showing. I guess. Uh, so I, I don't mind the two dollars. You, you okay? I think two dollars for this. She's dog? already been backed in, so okay. You missed the overs. Maybe I've already missed it. Okay. Anyway, if you're prepared to t- take on the two dollars, because there's an element of risk. But look, a dog that can run five forty first section and a sub. 30 seconds overall in this field uh, is going to be very handy. So race eight, number seven for me, Tweak Freak tonight. Hey, is that it? Yep. We've covered a lot, haven't Done. we? Done and dusted. All right. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully there's a winner or two in there. And if you can't make it to the track, we'll see you next week on the Wednesday preview.